you know, the, as far as you know, the, the rehab center being aggressive and providing you know, real therapy for the patient, it, it is a delicate balance between you know, trying to make believe that you're nice and schmoozy with the patient. You know, patients there and says, well, I really don't want too much therapy. You know, oh, I like that therapist because they're very gentle and they don't do very much and so on. So there's a way of, you know, sometimes some of the therapy is not necessarily aggressive. Tough but love. Tough love. You took you know, words out of yeah, my yeah, it, it, It's something that one needs to say, look, you know, uh, uh, the, the athletes say no pain, no gain. Not that it has to be torturous, but the patient, the therapist has to be technically good and he has to be a motivator. He has to be able to say to the patient, look, I, I got it, this is not so comfortable, but if we can get through this two, three, four sessions, that discomfort is going to go away. In fact, a lot of the pain that you have post-operatively is coming from stiffness, from scar tissue starting to form, adhesion starting to form. So if you look at those patients that are very aggressive with their physical therapy and very motivated in the first few days, their pain seems to kind of fall right down. Uh, and it's those that, you know, become hypersensitized and don't want to do that, but their pain lingers long. So it's important for the therapist to, you know, not necessarily be a physical terrorist, but they really need to also be able to, to motivate the patient and join the patient in being able to work through some of the discomfort. I would assume also a good pain management program comes into place, like, you know, upon admission to... You know, yeah, each, each, each person is there. You know, in the programs that I'm working in, in the pain management perioperatively is done by the anesthesia team. I mean, they are the best. I mean, they understand. It's not like the doctor walks by and says, oh, okay, give him a Vicodin or give him a Percocet. I mean, there's a whole pain concept right from the anesthesia to postoperatively. And actually, most of my patients are not having a tremendous amount of pain uh, because we're doing all of the anesthesia uh, the majority, 95%, under regional anesthesia, meaning epidural or femoral blocks. So you can numb, you know, the leg mm. totally when you're doing the surgery. So yes, people are nervous. I don't want to hear anything. Out of it. You can give the patient some twilight stuff, you know, and they can be snoring away. But they're really not under general anesthesia. They don't have a tube and a respirator and a coma and all of those things. They feel much better afterwards. Sure. But after the surgery. You can lighten up the epidural, right? so the epidural, instead of numbing all of the motor fibers, all of the muscles and the sensation, mm -hmm. you can lighten up the epidural, so you can stop moving your leg, but you can but the nerves you can keep the pain fibers in the nerve still desensitized. So you can contract your muscles, you can get out of bed, you can stop moving around, so on, mm -hmm. but the pain sensation is still being masked for 48 hours. So by the time you stop the epidural, or there's another type of block called an uh, ephemeral block. By the time you stop the block, the patient's surgical pain is already significantly uh, decreased. Uh, and so that's part of the newer technology. Six hour, Dr.